Anya here and I'm back with another video for Ophelia Talks and today we are making the Gold Hill Shawl. I love how light and lacy it is. And did you spot the tassels? So in a couple of videos ago I made the mini version of this shawl and I really really liked it and I thought why do I not have one of these so I am going to make one well I've made it and I'm going to show you how to make it now in that video I didn't show you how to do the tassels but I am going to do that here because making this little tassel was a little bit of a fiddle so I'm hoping to show you the big one and then you can see how to do the small one as well so what do you need I have here a hook which is far too big for the yarn so the yarn that I am using is Starcraft Special DK it's double knit yarn and it's prescribed for a four millimeter hook now if you use it with a four it becomes a nice uniform stitch if you use it with a smaller uh, hook like we did here it becomes tighter and smaller so although you know obviously this is a little fancy for a doll so it doesn't matter all that much but this is quite stiff so as you know I always use a three and a half for the Starcraft Special Decay because of my tension so this time we are going to be using a six and a half that is going to create a really, really lovely, lacy and drapey fabric. And so for me, personally, this is three sizes bigger than what I usually use. So if you normally use a four, I would recommend you use a seven. If you use a four and a half, go to an eight or stay with the seven. So you use a hook that's bigger than prescribed and quite a bit. Okay. Then, of course, you also need scissors and darning needle because there will be ends to be sewn in. How many balls do you need? So this is the cream color and I am suggesting you get four balls. So this shawl weighs 299 grams. So just, just three balls. If your tension is a little bit looser, then you will go over those three balls. Um, this shawl is quite big. It's fingertip to fingertip for me. So it's perfect for me to wear. If you get four balls, you will be able to, you know, crochet freely, of course. You will also be able to make this one, of course, because this only weighs 15 grams with the tassel. So 15 grams for the little one. And also you will have plenty left for tassels because yes I haven't added any just now but I am planning on adding tassels to my shawl so I'm making those with you at the end of the video so we are going to make a slip knot insert your hook close the loop and you're going to chain two one and two. Now the first one is going to be the chain that we are going to use as our magic circle almost. So now this chain here is going to be our turning chain. So we've done that one. Now we are going to start doing half double crochets into the first chain. So you yarn over, you go back into that first chain and if you just pick up that top strand there look you can see it will become bigger and that's where we're going to be working in so into there pull up a loop yarn over and you pull through the three loops on your hook same thing again yarn over into that enlarged first chain you do your half double crochet so this whole shawl is made with half double crochets and chains there we go. So we've done three half double crochets into the first chain. Now we are going to do two chains. One and two. This is going to be the tip of your shawl. Now we go back into our first chain there. And we are going to do another lot of three 
half double crochets into that enlarged chain. There we go. And if you look at it like this, just close that chain up a bit more again. Look, you've already got a triangular shape. Then we are going to chain one. So this is our second row and each row starts with a chain one turn and then you look at the v's the first v where that chain one is coming out of you see that chain one does not count as a stitch so we're going to make two half double crochets into that first v there so yarn over insert pull up a loop yarn over and pull through three and into the same stitch for a second one so every row is going to start like this. Chain one, turn, two half double crochets in the first stitch. Then we know in the previous round we did three half double crochets. So we've used one and now we have to use two more. So you go to the next stitch, to the next V. You go in and you do your half double crochet, just the one. Then onto the next stitch and you find that V and you do your half double crochet. Okay, now this may look as if you're already working into your chain two, into your tip, but it's not. You're still working in the V that belongs to the side. Remember this um, for the next rows as well. Okay, then we are going to do the tip. So we are finding the two chains of the tip and into that chain space here we are going to do one half double crochet two chains and one half double crochet and that is our tip made then we are going to do our side now we know in the previous row we did three half double crochets so we have to do three here so one, two, three. So this one, in fact, here is the chain that we have used in our tip. So we are not going to do that one here. We are going to go to the next one here, which is in fact the first one of that side. And we do our half double crochet and another one in the next stitch. And then of course, the third half double crochet here, which we are going to use we are going to do two half double crochets because that is going to be a place where we increase. Just a tip, if you are finding it difficult to remember which is your last stitch of the row then as you have done it here your first stitch after the chain you might want to put a stitch marker in there and that way you will know exactly which stitch it is that you have to do as last when you come back So now we are ready for row three. So we do one chain, you turn, and in that very first V, the very first stitch where the chain is coming out of, you are going to do a half double crochet and another one. There we go. So two half double crochets to get started. Then we do one half double crochet on every half double crochet of the side. And remember, you do the last one here as well, which may look as if you're already working in that chain space, but you're not. Then you've got your chain space made up of the two chains. Around that, you are going to do your tip of half double crochet, two chains and a half double crochet and then here this little one here is the chain so we're not going to use that one because we have used it here and then we start using 
the stitches on the side. Half double crochet on top of every half double crochet. Yeah, there we go. And then don't forget the very last one is the one where you are going to be doing two half double crochets. There we go. And this way, as you can see, it is a triangle shape and it is going to grow and grow each row because, of course, we are increasing on the top here and we are making our tips here. Now it will become what they call a straight angle. So it's a complete 90 degree angle triangle, just like this one here. You can put the boxes rows in wherever you want. It's only a repeat of two. So if it doesn't work out, you just add a half double crochet. So let's see if we can add a boxes row. Chain one, turn, yarn over and do your two half double crochets in that first stitch. I like to make sure that I have done the increase that I need so we might as well just start with it. Then we do chain one, skip one, then half double crochet in the next stitch. Chain one, skip one, half double crochet in the next stitch. Chain one, skip one and half double crochet in the next stitch. So this is your side that you have now done as a boxes row. Now we are going to work around the chain two to do our tip. So one half double crochet, two chains and one half double crochet. Now, because we ended with a half double crochet here, we are going to get started with one here in that first stitch as we usually use here. Now, had we not, because sometimes it works out that you end here, then you don't. So do the same thing so first of all do a half double crochet and then start doing your boxes again so chain one skip one half double crochet in the next chain one skip one and then here i've got my last stitch to do my two half double crochets in there we go so as you can see we now have three boxes on each side we started with our increases on both sides here and the tip, we did the tip, but we also did this symmetrically. So now we are going to do a row of half double crochets after a boxes row. So we're going to chain one, turn and do your two half double crochets in the very first stitch. Then you do a half double crochet in the next stitch and then you do one into the box. And then you place two half double crochets in each box. Then when you get to the end here, you place one into the stitch here. And another one there. Then you do your tip. And then you continue with the doing your half double crochets as you did them here. So two more there. And then you start placing them in your boxes again. Then when you get to the half double crochets again, you place one in there and then you go to the last stitch and you place two in there. And now you can get going on making the rows of half double crochets again. As you can see, this goes slightly like this because, of course, we are doing alternate 
two stitches next to each other and then one knot because of how the chains lie but that's okay once you start wearing it it will straighten up a little bit as you can see it's nice and loose and holy and i really like the fabric it creates <music> So then really it is just a repeat of the same thing. You start with your chain, you turn, you do your two half double crochets for increase. Then you are placing a half double crochet on top of every stitch on the side. Then you do your tip, half double crochet, two chains and half double crochet. You skip this one because that is your tip still, that is your chain. This one here is the first one that you are going to be using. And you do your half double crochets all along the row until you meet that double half double crochet and then the last one of those two you pick that up and you do two half double crochets in there there we go so as you can see i added rows of boxes to my shawl and i have hung it up here so you can see where they are now the way to count the rows of your shawl is to go down the middle and count the holes and i have put boxes in row 7 13 18 33 35 42 61 and 66. The whole shawl is 67 rows so you can see where to put your boxes rows but like I said in the tutorial you can put them anywhere because it's only a two stitch repeat. But of course you can make more or less boxes rows it's all up to you. Working with a big hook like this might require a little bit of practice. And so making a little sample like this before you actually continue on to your big shawl will help for you to get used to the feel and how much yarn you're actually using because your um, ball should be free flowing because that helps a lot. So work until your shawl is way past your fingertip to fingertip measurement or you have the size that you like to wear in any case. So there we go, I've done another row of boxes and so to finish my shawl I did a row of single crochets. So I'm going to chain one, turn and now I'm going to do single crochets instead of the half double ones that I have been doing and I am going to go round the chain space. And this will just finish your shawl off nicely and will open up those boxes because you will notice once you've done them sort of freshly made, they're not all that big, but then you put the next row on and they open up a bit. So there we go. So this is how I finished my shawl. And of course, here you continue putting on your single crochets as you were used to with the chain two for the tip and I'm going to put a tassel in there so it's all good.
Okay, let's make the tassel. So we are going to make the tassel using the same yarn, obviously. I use my big fabric scissors so I can cut through the tassel easily. I have a darning needle, some scissors, and then this box here is the box that I've been using for making tassels, and it's just a perfect size. One revolution is 12 inches or 30 centimeters, and that's, for me, that's the ideal size for my tassel. So we are going to get started by rolling around the yarn around my box. Now I would like really nice and thick tassels so I have to do lots of revolutions. <laughs> Okay, so that's enough revolutions. I'm going to cut off the yarn there. Then I'm going to take a strand, I'm going to double it, cut it off there, and I'm going to put my needle on it. Put the needle in the middle there. And I'm just going to feed it underneath all my strands. There we go. You could have put that there to begin with and then roll around it, but that just makes it so awkward. So it's easier if you just do this. Now I've done two strands, so it's a bit thicker for us to attach it to the shawl. So now we're going to really, really make a very, very tight knot. Do a double knot. There we go. OK, and maybe one more. Why not? Voila. Then you are going to take your yarn off your box carefully, making sure you don't upset it. Hold it with the strands there and just make sure all the strands go down nicely like this. Then you take your yarn again and I sort of lay it like this there. So it's already incorporated in the tassel itself. And then I start winding around and I do it very, very tightly. And I do it about sort of a nice length. So you have a nice um, sort of, you know, sphere at the top of your tassel and then it's easier to start winding from this end. There we go. And I keep doing it really tight and pulling it tighter as I go. And then at one point it is nice and tight and then I make sure that I lay the strands nicely next to each other. So it forms a nice band of yarn there, as you can see. I think that's okay. I mean, I try to make them the same. It's, you know, you can't really. But if you counted your revolutions, you might be able to do it. But obviously, that's not me. <laughs> so I've cut off that yarn. I'm putting it back on my needle here. And then I go into the tassel and down. Bring it out. And that will secure there we go, that will secure that band. And now, once again, you go and do this. So hold it all nicely in your hand and then find the middle of all of these strands and just cut them. And this is why it's easy to have big scissors because the more you can cut in one go, the better, obviously. And then all you need to do is make sure... So the first one you do and you make it as long as you want. But then for the second one, I do try and make it... Yeah, it's about the same size. So I'm not going to take much off. I didn't with the first one. Just here. Can you see the little scraggly ends here? Just cutting those. And just cleaning it up. There we go. See? And there we are. So now it's time to attach it. We've got these four strands. I separate them into two and two. I'm going to 
bring them through the chain space of my single crochet row and I'm going to tie them. There we go. I mean, you could do a fringe. You could do smaller tassels, obviously. I like the bum tassel though. <laughs> <laughs> so there we go. So it's now attached just with a knot. And now all you need to do is you've got long ends here. So I'm going to put them on my needle and I am going to sew them into the fabric. And that way, I don't think I haven't lost any of my key lane shawl ones, which I did exactly the same. So I think it's working. And I am not being careful with it. This is it. Sometimes you make something like this and you think, oh, you need to be careful when you have this hanging on your shawl. I am not careful with it at all. My reasoning is it's there. It's for me to use. It's making it pretty. If I lose one, too bad. I'll just make another one. <laughs> I haven't had to replace any. So that's good. So, OK, let me now show you how to do a mini tassel. So for the mini tassel, you're going to put a piece of yarn across your fingers like so. Then take your other yarn and lay it over like this and then wind it round your two fingers, incorporating, of course, the strand on your fingers there already. There we go. OK, then you cut off the yarn. You tie this one all, of course, while you still have it on your fingers. There we go. So that's tied up now. Then take this off. And then in the same fashion, add your strand again. Wind it round a couple of times. And when I say a couple, it literally is just a couple, not too many, maybe a little bit lower there. Then we cut off this yarn, put that on the needle. It's all very um, <laughs> handy, this. So get this onto your needle. There we go. Nope. <laughs> So put your needle in first, maybe, and then feed this one through. There we go. That might have just worked. There we go. There we are. See? And then, of course, you hold it the other way round. And you cut it all off. Yeah, there we go. Look, mini tassel made. And then, of course, you attach it the same way as I did with the big tassel. So there we go. I hope you will enjoy making this shawl. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.